guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin if you're new here and on this channel we talk about building your dream life and your dream closet. We talk about all things fashion, beauty, femininity, mindset, and lifestyle. Overall just how to romanticize your life and live the soft life. So before we get into the video, if that sounds like something you're interested in and that sounds like a community that you would like to join, please consider clicking the subscribe button down below. It would mean the absolute world to me. And feel free to follow me over on my Instagram at Caitlin Mahina. It's a little bit more fashion focused over on my Instagram, but if that's something you're interested in, uh, please go ahead and follow me over there. I post a lot of reels. I post every other day over on my Instagram. And if Instagram is not your thing, I also post uh, YouTube shorts and I post on TikTok. You'll find the links to all those things down below. But now that I have gotten that out of the way, let's jump into the video. I'm sure you can probably guess by the title or the thumbnail, but today we are going to be talking all about how to build the princess wardrobe of your dreams. We're going to be talking about all things princess core and romantic fashion. So let's talk about it. If you are new to the term princess core, you're just stumbling across this video now and you've never heard about princess core before, it is a sort of new-ish, actually it's probably been around for about a year based on the research that I was doing, but it is a trend all about dressing as the name suggests like a princess and in a very romantic and magical way. I did find an official definition on birdie.com that I really feel like sums up the princess core trend very well. So it says princess core, also known as royal core or regency core, is a subcategory of cottage core, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, that blends the whimsical nature of the original cottage core aesthetic with elements of fantasy, romance, and even in some cases, history. The first tip that I want to talk about is that you can make embracing the princess fashion lifestyle as intense tense or as subtle as you want it to be. So if you're clicking on this video and you are new to this, don't think that, you know, I wear ball gowns to go to the gas station. I have before, but that's just because I was on the way somewhere else. I don't want people to feel intimidated thinking if you are not going all out, then you cannot claim that you dress in the princess core aesthetic. That is just not true. You can have princess outfits on any end of the spectrum from, you know, dresses with fabulous bustles that have trains to just a cute little cardigan with some fun little sparkly buttons. So don't feel intimidated and don't feel like you need to shell out tons and tons of money and wear very, very over the top elaborate pieces in order to partake in the princess core aesthetic because that's just not true. Tip number two is that you can interpret what a princess wears in absolutely any way that you want to. I have seen so many different creators online or just people that are sharing their love of dressing like a princess have all different types of aesthetics. You could be a very very gothic dark princess you could go the historically accurate route where you're really into costume history you could go the disney princess route where maybe you're very very inspired by disney princesses you could go the very very feminine route the route that i like to take the princess aesthetic that i really like to embrace is i kind of do like a seasonal girly thing so obviously i am very much a, a girly girl <laughs> but i tend to switch my wardrobe around based on the season as in i change up my color palette which i'll get into color palette in a second but i want to make sure that you know that you do not have to dress in a specific color palette or a specific type of way and feel like that's the only way that you can embrace the princess core aesthetic. You don't have to wear all pink, you don't have to wear all black, you don't have to wear flowers, you don't have to wear corsets, you don't have to wear crowns or gloves or tiaras, you do not have to do any of that. I do not do like half of those things. I really think something that's so beautiful about this aesthetic is that the end goal is to make the wearer of these garments feel beautiful and magical and elegant and like the most wonderful version of themselves. It's not about saying you can only wear this one thing in order to be, you know, princess core. And so I just want to put that out there. You can interpret this in any way you want as long as you feel magical and royal and princess-like. That is the end goal. Tip number three is to make sure that whatever it is that you're wearing, it makes you feel confident and that it makes you feel comfortable. I personally am a believer that comfort and confidence tend to go hand in hand. I can't remember a single time that I've worn something super, super uncomfortable, whether it was painful shoes or just something that was too tight and that I have also felt confident at the same time. I just don't really think that it's possible to be super, super uncomfortable, but also super, super confident. And so for example, if you never, ever, ever want to wear a corset ever, that's fine. You don't have to. If you never, ever want to wear heels, 
that's okay if you don't want to wear you know really expensive undergarments and stays and you know fancy bras and just things that are uncomfortable for you then don't do it <laughs> because the point of this aesthetic is to feel like the best version of yourself and it's very very hard to feel pretty and beautiful and like a wonderful fairy princess if you are in pain or you feel like you have to suck in or you just feel like you're wearing something that's inauthentic to you so just really really make sure that whatever it is whatever magical pieces that you wear make sure that there's something that you you know stand tall you put your shoulders back and you just sweep through the room or wherever you are with confidence because you know that you look good and you feel good. For tip number four, to get into a more technical tip, I would suggest that whatever it is that you decide your princess core aesthetic or wardrobe is going to be, try to stick to a color scheme. And this is just a guideline. You do not have to follow it. You could have all kinds of different crazy colors and whatever it is that you want. But for example, I mentioned earlier that I sort of organized my wardrobe by season. So we're entering spring, which is why my wardrobe is pastel and very, you know, light and airy and it makes me feel like a little spring princess you know in the summertime i move more towards white and yellow and then in the fall i do you know the typical fall colors that you think about orange browns dark greens then the winter i do more of like a darker princess theme and the reason that i do that is because it makes it more likely that you will actually get wear out of your pieces if you have other things that you can wear with those pieces. So again, I'm not trying to say you must do it this way in order to have a princess core wardrobe. I have just found that especially when it comes to pieces like this, you know, this is a dress that I, you know, wouldn't just wear absolutely anywhere or whatever type of piece it is, even if it's like a really cool, you know, sweater or a really beautiful skirt or a beautiful top. If you already think, hmm, this is going to be kind of hard to style because it's a little bit more extravagant, which is kind of like the default of the princess core aesthetic, it is so helpful to have other pieces in your collection that are in the same vibe or color scheme because, again, the end goal is to actually get wear out of our pieces and not just buy beautiful things just to look at them. We actually want to wear them and enjoy wearing them. So as you can see here, I mean, this is my end of winter, start of spring wardrobe. I'm not going to go Go through every single piece individually because we would be here forever and this is something that has taken me honestly probably three to five years to curate so uh, as you can see there's still some very dark colors because we are in uh, mid-february and i live somewhere very very snowy and cold and so for whatever reason black and white is just a very wintry combination for me but as you can see, I'm also bringing in, this is my dress section, I'm also bringing in spring colors a little bit here, but they still go together nicely. I didn't mean for this to turn into a video on color theory, but I'm just trying to prove my point here. So as you can see, I, I have white dresses. I'm starting to bring in a little bit of purple and a little bit of green because I honestly feel like, and actually I know this for a fact because I get use out of every single one of my pieces. I can pick out any one of these pieces to wear, whether it's this gray coat or, you know, this floral dress. And I know that there are other things that I can style it with. And so I get so much wear out of my pieces because my wardrobe is cohesive. And I've been thinking about doing a whole other video on this topic because I've actually done a video on this before about how I organize my wardrobe and how I really got my dream closet. I will link that video up above. It's one of my favorite videos I've actually ever posted on YouTube, but it just never really got that much traction. So I'm thinking about doing an updated version now that my wardrobe is just even more magical and amazing than I ever thought would be possible for me. Um, so back to the tip, hopefully this makes sense. But as you can see, having a cohesive wardrobe really, really means that I get my money's worth and wear all of my pieces. The next tip that I want to talk about is to let one piece really be the focus of your look. And because the princess core aesthetic tends to be a bit more on the over the top lots of details you know lots of things that draw the eye sort of aesthetic I feel like it is very easy to get overwhelmed and just really pile everything on and you really just are taking away from the outfit by being too busy I'm gonna say it one more time you can do whatever the heck you want if you want to have a million things that are super super eye-catching on your body and you love it and you feel fabulous 
awesome. But this is again more for someone who's just trying to figure out how to style princess core pieces in a way that feels less intimidating. Maybe it's an amazing pair of shoes or an amazing bag, an awesome coat, a beautiful sweater, a beautiful skirt, whatever it is. But I have just found that if you build your looks around one major piece, it is just that much more wearable and that much less intimidating to get dressed and still feel really, really beautiful and fabulous. And that way, whatever it is that you're wearing, whatever piece is the standout piece, it really, really gets its time to shine. That being said, the last tip that I have for you guys is to accessorize. And this probably sounds very counterintuitive. I just said to not put a million things on, but I do think that accessorizing definitely has its place in the princess core aesthetic. And the super fun thing about accessorizing in the princess core world is that you have so many options on what you want your accessories to be. So obviously jewelry, but as I mentioned before, corsets, gloves, belts, shoes, bags, you know, crowns, hats, scarves, head scarves, whatever it is that you want to put on. I do think that paying attention to those details is important. Don't detract from whatever it is that you want your main piece of the outfit to be, but I do think that there is a way to accessorize a princess core look that doesn't take away from you know whatever the main thing is that you want to show off but that adds to it that enhances it hopefully i'm making sense here but have fun with accessorizing but if you look in the mirror after you know putting together your outfit and you're like ah this seems kind of like a lot think about removing a thing or two i'm pretty sure that's a chanel quote you know take something off before you leave the house but it is true um i do think there is such thing as over accessorizing but just find that happy balance of accessorizing in a way that enhances your look rather than taking away from it and making it look like way too much. Okay, so now I'm going to give you guys some recommendations on where to shop to find princess core slash romantic styles and outfits and pieces and all that good stuff. I'm going to be going in order from least expensive to most expensive because I understand that sometimes princesses need to be on a budget and I also believe that you do not have to go all out and buy like the 1000 plus dollars dress in order to call yourself someone who you know dresses romantically and in a feminine way so let's go ahead and get started so I'm gonna start off with Amazon and Amazon specifically I've talked about these dresses before I will talk about these dresses again they make these fabulous as you can see I have three of them here do you see these three different colors here they make these fabulous dresses that I will show you guys more of in um, some try-on clips that I film However, I think not just these dresses are fabulous, even though these are my favorite thing from Amazon. They also make other really, really beautiful and affordable princess dresses or just feminine style dresses. I only own these. Actually, I own another one that I wear in the summertime, but I digress. They make some really, really beautiful maxi length or any type of length princess dresses. If you're not just looking for dresses, they also make great corsets. I have a corset from Amazon. I also have pretty much most of my hair accessories are from Amazon including some really beautiful headbands like I have a pearl one and a velvet one and I know you can also get gloves on Amazon I've got hair bows on Amazon and so I think Amazon really is a great place that is not only affordable but it's also great for just kind of like the basic pieces if I'm completely honest with you you're probably not going to find anything on Amazon that's just like wow jaw on the floor like crazy crazy incredible pieces but if you are on a budget and you're looking for just the basic items that you really want to check off your list go to amazon do some digging you will find some really really great stuff for really affordable prices the next store i want to talk about is and other stories and i am a somewhat new and other story shopper i only discovered them last year i think like the beginning of last year and while most of their stuff is not over the top like this is definitely princess core something that i really really like about and other stories is first of all really really great quality really great quality and also a lot of their pieces have like princess core touches so if you are looking for something that's feminine and princess core but you can wear it to work or you can wear it in a place where you know you can't wear this and that would be like wildly inappropriate and other stories has really awesome stuff let me actually grab this 
sweater. I have a couple of sweaters from them and I'll be showing you guys in the try on clips. But for example, this sweater is from And Other Stories. And this is something that I absolutely can wear to work. I absolutely have worn to work. They do really, really great knits with like little pretty touches like this. It is a little bit on the pricier side, definitely more expensive than Amazon. But if you are willing to invest a little bit in pieces that you will have in your wardrobe for a very long time, And Other Stories is great. I feel like they have classic high quality pieces with those feminine touches and so it's the kind of thing where if you you know spend a little bit more money on something like this I believe this was like just under a hundred dollars for this sweater I will have this sweater until it literally falls apart on me because I am obsessed with it and it's such high quality and it doesn't feel like it's a trend piece to me next up we have ASOS or ASOS depending on how you want to pronounce it and now that I'm thinking about it maybe it should have gone before and other stories but the thing that I find with ASOS is that it really really depends like their price range could either be like crazy crazy affordable like Amazon level or depending on the piece it can be much more expensive and something about ASOS is that you do have to dig a little bit to find great pieces but I have found some amazing pieces on ASOS when I was going through my collection and I was like trying to pick out some brands where I was like oh I definitely have bought from there like this qualifies as a princess core store I found like interestingly enough I found more pieces than I thought I would like this I'm not sure how well it's gonna pick up on camera this this really pretty black lace top that just looks super feminine and like this really really fabulous polka dot blouse that I've worn on my Instagram plenty of times before it's just super super romantic and girly low-key I have bought so many things from ASOS that at the time I was like oh I'm just saving money and I'm buying these pieces that I can afford that feel a little bit more special ASOS is kind of like a sleeper princess core place to you know buy girly clothing because you don't really think about ASOS ASOS kind of has like anything under the sun any style any aesthetic that you could possibly want to wear ASOS has it and so do a little bit of digging and you will find some really special pieces that you will have in your wardrobe for a very long time next I just want to give a quick shout out to Etsy if I'm being honest I've only bought a handful of more princess core things from Etsy because I don't know I just I probably should just do more shopping on Etsy. It's just not the first place I think of when I think about clothing. I buy home goods and stuff on there all the time, but I am trying to sort of organize this silky wrap skirt. I have two of these. This is the white one that I have. It looks crazy because it's a wrap skirt and so it's like totally unfolded now, obviously, but typically it'll look more like that with like the bow tied you don't really want to see me mess with this for like another 15 minutes but i also have a black one which i've definitely posted recently over on my instagram i also have this fabulous chunky knit sweater with like strawberries on it definitely posted that on my instagram before so like i said just go ahead and check out my instagram at kayla mahina if you like want to see more details and like more of my princess core wardrobe because i post pretty much all my pieces on there. But back to Etsy. Etsy really is awesome for if you kind of want something that's more handmade and it helps to support, you know, small businesses, local businesses, artisans, all that cool stuff. And so honestly, I need to shop on Etsy more. I just don't think about it. It's not the first place that comes to mind for me, but there are definitely some incredible things that you can find on Etsy, whether it's like authentic vintage pieces or just beautiful handmade pieces. There's something about handmade clothes. Like I know this is handmade. There's something about handmade clothes that just really has a romantic feel, a more cottage core feel to it, honestly. And so definitely check out Etsy. It is amazing for really unique and special pieces. Next up, I want to talk about For Love and Lemons. This is a huge brand you have definitely heard of for love and lemons before I love their pieces I own I think on my rail right now I have three different for love and lemons dresses I'll just pick out one of them and I'll show you guys the other ones in my little try on clips but for love and lemons definitely nails the whole girly aesthetic like the super super hyper feminine really really detailed like look at the details on this however it is absolutely more on the sexy side of the spectrum which I love I love being a little sexy here and there I think it's super super fun and empowering and it makes me feel good about myself however if you are someone who's more on the conservative side this might not be the store for you because they actually originated as a lingerie company and then they sort of branched out into dresses and other pieces and so I will forever maybe not forever but for a very long time I see myself shopping on for love and lemons because their pieces are 
are just unparalleled when it comes to details like the lace and the bows and the fastenings and the buttons and like just all the pretty details. This is another For Love and Lemons dress that I've had for years that just really is a great example of having incredible detail. There's like these beautiful, you know, floral appliques with sparkles and then the bows for the straps are just beautiful, but this is just another great example of why For Love and Lemons definitely falls into the princess core category, but it can be a little bit on the pricey side, like their dresses, like their mini dresses start around like $150 and only go up from there, but highly, highly, highly worth it if you want something that is unique and feminine and beautiful and high quality. Next we have House of CB, and I wanna put a quick little disclaimer in here. I have quite a few House of CB pieces. However, they are pretty much all in my like later in the spring slash summer wardrobe, and even in my fall wardrobe, I just don't have a lot of like, house of cb pieces that match with this color scheme except for this top and it's actually a bodysuit so i'm not going to show you that part because that's just no one needs to see that but as you can see this is a very very fantastical highly detailed corset top with tie details and sort of leg of mutton sleeves that come really long and it's just really really a gorgeous piece i'm sure you've heard of house of cb because they are just like for 11 lemons they are a very very popular clothing brand especially on instagram and something about house of cb is a couple of notes here one their stuff is incredibly high quality like just probably slightly better quality than for love and lemons honestly not necessarily because it's more detailed or anything like that but just because of like the construction of the garments is very high quality because second point here is most of their pieces are very very form-fitting like if i had to guess like 80 percent of their pieces either have boning in them like this has boning in it because it's like a corset style or it's just naturally the way that they shaped the garment is a very very tight hourglass figure and so their stuff tends to run small and there have been some house of cb pieces that i bought when i thought i was a certain size and then i lost weight recently or i've been slowly losing weight over a period of time and now they fit me a couple of years later even though i know i'm not that size anymore like for example i bought pieces in a size four i'm closer to a two now and i now fit in them and so if you're unsure if you're picking up a piece from house of cb that's really really structured if you're unsure size up especially if you have a larger chest because their pieces tend to be very like lifting and just chesty <laughs> and i am not you know that gifted in the chest and so it's not really a huge deal for me but even in some of their pieces i feel like every now and then it's like ooh, am i gonna am i gonna spill out of this you know what i mean but other than that i if out of all these brands if i had to pick one brand that makes me feel so so hot <laughs> it is house of cb just the construction of their garments is just really really tailored towards showing off the female form every time i wear a house of cb piece i like feel like a goddess like i feel like is this what angelina jolie feels like when she wakes up in the morning like that's that's how i feel whenever i'm wearing their pieces so if that's something that you're interested in do yourself a favor if you need an ego boost buy something from house of cb and wear it everywhere you go because you will turn heads it is just phenomenal i would highly highly Highly, highly, highly recommend them. Now onto the brand where if I had to pick one brand and say that it is my favorite for princess core fashion, it would be this brand. It is the brand I am currently wearing and that is Selkie. I have talked about Selkie on my channel for years now. This was actually the first Selkie dress that I ever bought. Selkie is a female owned company. I don't even know where to start. It's a female owned company and all of their dresses are sort of not all of them, but they started by making dresses that are sort of more in this puff style where it's like empire waist and just big poofy layers of organza fabric. I currently have three in my closet, including the one that I'm wearing. I own more Selkie dresses than just these three, but they are over in storage again for my spring, late spring and summer, you know, pinks and yellows and stuff that I just don't have out right now. I want to own all of these Selkie dresses. They are amazing for twirling. They are super, super comfortable because most of their dresses, the only measurement you really need to pay attention to is your under the bust measurement they are so comfortable i first started buying these when i was like 20 pounds heavier um covid weight is very 
difficult time for me. I'm gonna make a separate video on that at some point in time, but I could still fit into my sulky dresses and they make me feel so beautiful no matter what is going on with my body because truly you have no idea what is going on under here. Like you have no clue <laughs> and they're so, so comfy. I think it's also important to note that they are all handmade. They're not like hand stitched, stitched by hand, but they're, you know, they use sewing machines. Selkie is very, very open about their production and like, you know, the fact that they have factories in China, but they're trying to break the connotation of, you know, things made in China are bad quality. I don't know how to describe it. Just every single Selkie dress that I have received, like the craftsmanship, you can tell that someone actually hand stitched it together. And something about that just makes it like extra magical and wonderful to me. This is the newest Selkie dress to my collection and it is the first Selkie gown that I have ever purchased. I'm gonna have a really hard time going back to the puff dress style because now that I have invested in a Selkie gown, I have literally never tried something on in my entire life that has made me feel so beautiful. It is seriously such a special piece to me. Every time I look at it, I get a little bit emotional. I will treasure it forever and ever and ever and ever. Go and check out the Selkie Instagram because there are just no words for how wonderful and magical and special their pieces are. I think it's really cool that they release small collections often that kind of have the same silhouettes but different colorways and so if you see a style that you like but you're not really interested in the color just wait like a month or two or three and they'll come out with a new one they're always releasing new colorways and as someone who loves dressing for a theme i think it's super cool that each little collection that they introduce is very very specific to a theme like it'll typically have like a story and i think that's part of the reason why their dresses are so romantic and special because you can really tell that each piece or each collection isn't just like okay we're gonna do a blue collection now there's like a story and a mood board and the photo shoots are so romantic and special and beautiful and that attention to detail into not just making and creating garments but giving them life and giving them like a background and like something special about them just really really means a lot to me i like shopping for clothes in that way but unfortunately not every brand has that ethos but something about you know the way selkie talks about their collections and like tells you stories about you know why they chose certain patterns and prints is just so unbelievably special and I need to stop talking about Selkie now because I could go on all day. So let's move on to the last brand. The last brand, and without a doubt, the most expensive brand that I'm gonna talk about today is Lyrica Matoshi. And if you have heard of them before, or if that name sounds familiar, it's because they are the makers of the strawberry dress, which I actually do own. And I'm so grateful to say that I own that dress. However, I don't have it up because it's pink and my pink stuff does not come out until later in the season. But I actually do have two Lyrica Matoshi pieces in this collection because they're both black and so let me show you this one really really quickly as you can see it is a glittery star dress it is a sort of mid-length slash mini dress the cool thing about them is that they make just absolutely unbelievable pieces like if i had to pit this dress up against a selkie dress even though selkie is like my favorite brand ever the attention to detail the construction the detail everything about this these garments from Lyrica Matoshi are unbelievable. I'd have to say that Lyrica Matoshi makes the highest quality, most detailed pieces. Like the strawberry dress is, after this dress, it's my next favorite dress that I own. It's just beautiful. However, they have started pivoting away from making this type of clothing. Lyrica Matoshi, when it first like really gained popularity before the pandemic and during the pandemic with the strawberry dress, most of their clothes were sort of this romantic, glittery, rainbowy I mean this obviously is a rainbow but rainbow pink dress style like really feminine girly style but after that like over the last year or so they've kind of transitioned into like more edgy unique cool pieces like pieces that you could imagine like I don't know a Danish fashion blogger wearing <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it I'll just have to go on their website and see what I'm talking about Honestly, I don't even know if they make this dress anymore because they've pivoted so hard away from this style. I think they still do make the strawberry dress and like a couple variations of the strawberry dress. But as someone who studied fashion merchandising, if I had to guess, the reason they still produce that is because it's such a high volume selling item for them. So it kind of feels like if you look at their website, it's like there's like a handful of very specific, like more girly princess pieces like this that they still sell. And then there's their more out 
other kind of kooky, new wave, interesting pieces that there's like more of those on their website. And so I think honestly what they're doing is they still sell their girly pieces so that they can you know, still be profitable. Not that they wouldn't be profitable at all, but you know what I mean? Still generate really solid income from those while getting to experiment with like newer styles. And so I can't guarantee that their website is still the best place ever to find princessy pieces. However, um, if you are interested in buying a Lyrica Matoshi piece, they are pricey. There is a reason they're that pricey because they are just actual hanging works of art. Okay guys, that's all I have to share with you in this video. Thank you so much to sticking to the end. I hope it was helpful for you if you are new to the more romantic and princessy side of the internet and of fashion. And if you already know a lot of stuff about princess core or you know, maybe you're not even that interested, I hope you at least found this video enjoyable to watch. Please let me know down in the comments below what you think about anything I've talked about, whether it's, you know, if you think princess core is something you're interested in or you're not interested in or if you are interested in it what do you do what do you wear what are some brands that you recommend some tips just anything you want to talk about i love talking about this kind of stuff obviously so i'd really appreciate a comment down below and i'll chat with you down there and like i said before please feel free to follow me over on my instagram at caitlin mahina i'm going to be posting a lot more spring and princessy style stuff coming up because it's warming up and that's like dress season for me. It starts like mid spring. So I'm super excited to be posting on there again, more feminine, you know, naturey, princessy, romantic content. So like I said, if that sounds interesting to you, please go ahead and follow me over there. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.